Hi traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ and welcome to another video collaboration with Bar Chart. Today we're looking at long strangles, a high risk, high reward option strategy. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only, is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So in today's video, we're looking at the long strangle strategy. It's a high risk, high reward trade. You'll learn about how the trade works, when to place it, and how to find trading opportunities using barchart.com and barchart Excel. If you're new to this strategy, this video will equip you with the knowledge and tools you need. So what exactly is a long strangle? Well, it's an option strategy that involves buying both a call and a put option with different strike prices, but the same expiration date. The strategy is a play on volatility, and you're essentially betting that the underlying asset will make a significant move, either up or down. We don't mind which way, as long as it makes a big move in either direction. Some of the benefits of a long strangle are that it has unlimited profit potential. They benefit from a rise in volatility and they have an attractive risk to reward ratio, depending on how you set them up, which we'll look at in a second. Some of the disadvantages of a long strangle are that they lose money through time decay. So some people prefer to be option sellers where they're making money from time decay. The downside of a long strangle is that it loses money each day through time decay. They can be expensive and we need the stock to make a big move. So obviously if the stock doesn't move, the trade's not gonna be profitable. It's gonna be losing money each day through time decay. In terms of the trade setup, we buy an out of the money call and an out of the money put. Usually we keep those at an equal distance away from the stock price. In the example below, uh, the trader is buying the $55 call and the $45 put. So you can see that there with the payoff diagram, that trade costs $400 and we need the stock to move above about 58, 59 on the upside or below about 41 on the downside by expiration. If we go further out with our strike prices, we can get a cheaper trade. So the trade on the right costs less, only costs $200, but it needs a much bigger move to be profitable at expiration. So in this case, it's a cheaper trade, only $200 at risk, but we need it to go above about 62 by expiration or below about 38. Whereas with this one, costs a little bit more, $400, our break-evens are slightly closer. Some of the characteristics of the long strangle are that the maximum loss is limited to the premium paid. So you always know the worst case scenario. Ideally, you don't want to hold them to expiration if the stock isn't moving. Typically, you want to go out about three to six months. And if the trade or the stock hasn't started to move within the first couple of weeks or the month, then you want to look to close it out. So you should never really suffer a maximum loss, but you always know that the maximum loss is actually equal to the premium paid. You can't lose any more than that. The maximum gain is unlimited. So that's unlimited on the upside and slightly limited on the downside to the point of the stock going to zero, uh, but very, very high profit potential if the, does, if the stock does uh, start to move. The break-even points are equal to the call strike plus the premium paid and the put strike less the premium paid. So the below payoff diagram shows the profit and loss potential at expiration. That's our blue line here. And the T plus zero line, which is the purple line that you see here. T plus zero line basically just means the trade date plus zero days. How does the trade look as of today? And you can see here that you can actually make a profit on a smaller move, provided it happens early in the trade. And what's gonna happen as the trade progresses, this purple line is gonna move down and down and down, closer and closer to this blue line each day until eventually on the last day, it becomes the blue line. And if the stock is staying in this area here around 77, the trade's just gonna be losing a little bit of money each day through time decay. Uh, an increase in implied volatility is also gonna help the trade. So an ideal scenario is that the stock makes a big move and we get an increase in implied volatility. So for example, if this stock here was to make a big move lower, we're seeing some good profit this purple line might actually be even higher because it could be associated with a rise in implied volatility as well. 
In terms of our Greeks, the delta is neutral. So it's a neutral trade. The long strangle generally starts delta neutral. However, the trade will start to take on a directional exposure once the stock price starts to move. And if we go back to our payoff diagram, that kind of makes sense because if the stock starts to go lower, we want it to keep going lower. We don't want it to come back down into the middle here. We want it to keep trending in that direction. So Delta is neutral to start with, but it won't stay that way. Vega is positive, and that means an increase in implied volatility will benefit the trade and a decrease in implied volatility will hurt the trade. So as we'll see in a moment, we tend to want to place these types of trades when volatility is really low, and we're expecting that volatility might increase in the future. Theta is negative, so that means that the value of the position will erode as each day passes. Traders need the stock to move or make a big move before the effects of time decay become too severe. In terms of our Vega, if we go further out of the money, that's going to reduce the Vega exposure. So we put those strike prices further away from the stock price, it has a lower Vega. Going further out in time is going to increase the Vega exposure. You can see that here. If we compare um, an SPY long strangle that's 8.5% out of the money compared to a 4% out of the money, three months duration, the Vega is lower for the longer or the further away one. And the longer term trade uh, has much higher Vega. So further out in time, higher Vega exposure, further away from the stock price, lower Vega. In terms of our theta, going further out of the money reduces the time decay. So that kind of makes sense again because the trade is a bit cheaper. There's less premium to, to lose and that's going to reduce our time decay slightly. Going further out in time also decreases the time decay. So longer term trades have slower time decay. So that can be one thing to do with a long strangle is look to place those trades a bit further away in time and that's going to reduce the amount of time decay that you're suffering each day. So again, if we look here at our, our three-month trade that's 4% out of the money, we're losing about $45 a day in time decay, but a 12-month trade placed around the same price is only losing $27 a day in time decay. And also, if we place the strikes further out of the money, we'll suffer less time decay as well. In terms of the cost of the trade, going further out of the money reduces the cost and going further out in time increases the cost. So we can see here, if we go 4% away, it's going to cost 5,200. But if we go further away at 8.5%, it's only going to cost 2,600. Trade-off is that we need the stock to make a bigger move by expiration. And going further out in time, uh, can significantly increase the cost as well. But the benefit of going further out in time is we suffer less time decay. So when should we trade long strangles? The first thing we want to look for is a low IV percentile or low IV rank. So we want to be doing this on a stock that has quite low volatility. That means the options are historically cheap compared to the recent past. As we're buying those options, we want them to be cheap. Therefore, we want to look for stocks and ETFs with a low IV percentile or IV rank. And you can also use the TTM squeeze indicator on barchart.com, which I'll show you in a second. So this is where we can find our IV percentile, IV rank. And then on our charting, we can look for this TTM squeeze indicator. If we go to our stock page for Apple, just on the main page, we scroll down here to our options overview. There's our IV rank and IV percentile. And if we go to our interactive chart, go to studies and just type in TTM and you'll see the TTM squeeze indicator there. Just use the standard settings, uh, should be fine. Here's an example on McDonald's of when a nice squeeze occurred and a long strangle would have done really well. So we can see here, the squeeze is in the red and then it moves to green around March 22nd, 23rd. The Bollinger Bands are also quite tight and we see the stock goes on a really nice trend, nice up move from there. And you'll see that the long strangle would have made a really nice profit in this scenario. So with the date of March 22nd, when that squeeze fired, we could look to buy a 290 call at 715 and buy a September 250 put 
So six dollars fifty with a net cost of thirteen sixty five. So both those strikes are about twenty dollars out of the money. Both cost around about the same, and we can see our payoff diagram here. We've got multiple T lines here, just so you can see how the trade progresses over time. This is how you see it losing money over time if the stock stays um, in this same spot at two seventy. But if it makes a big move, uh, we can do quite well. And then if we go forward to May the 2nd, we can see here that the trade was up about $720 or about 53% in a fairly short space of time. We can also use Bar Chart Excel to look at our implied volatility chart and we can compare that to the historical volatility as well. So again, looking at McDonald's, um, we can see that the volatility tends to range between about 13 and 30. So anytime volatility is low around the 12 to 13 level, that can be a really good time to enter a long strangle. So you can use Bar Chart Excel to get this information on any stock that you're interested in. And then also using barchart.com, um, you can use the screeners there to find any stocks with a low IV percentile as well. If we look at the long strangle screener, we get some good results. I like to filter these by probability. I also like to keep an eye on um, how much we're paying for the long strangle. We don't want that to be too high as a percentage of the stock price. So there's some good examples here where we're only play, paying 2 or 3% of the stock price, which means our break-even prices uh, are not going to be too far away from the stock price. For example, if we take uh, Nike trading at 118.61, going out to the January expiration, buying the 125 call and the 115 put costs about $533 with break-even prices of 109.67 and 130.33 and an estimated probability of 39.2%. So that's a great way to find some trade ideas. Um, you can play around with the settings there, look for longer-term trades, shorter-term trades, whichever suits. But that's a great way to find uh, potential long-strangle trades. And you can filter for particular stocks that you're looking for. Um, you can filter for stocks that have a low IV percentile, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so let's recap what you've learned today. A long strangle involves buying an out-of-the-money call and an out-of-the-money put. The trade has unlimited profit potential and benefits from a big move in the stock and or a rise in implied volatility. The best time to start a long strangle is when implied volatility is low or when the stock is coming out of a squeeze. And you can use the tools at barchart.com and barchart Excel to find long strangle trade ideas. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and best of luck with your trading.